Everyone has acoustic problems in their room, even the professionals. Here are some of the problems I've had in my studio recently, and hopefully the solutions I've found are helpful to you in your studio. Hi, I'm Ed Thorne. It's good to see you. So I have a 4.5 by 3 by 2.1 meter room with 50 mil rock wall lining all four walls. And when I moved in, I assumed I wouldn't need additional treatment. However, the room measures pretty badly. For context, I've always had a peak of 10 to 12 decibels between 40 and 50 hertz and a massive null of up to 20 dB at 100 hertz depending on speaker placement. Now I should caveat this that the size of a null can often be misrepresented by the smoothening effect you may have on your room measuring software such as Ruse or SoundID Arc or Trinov for example. This is with 20 dB with no smoothening so with smoothening it's not quite as drastic. I've since found out that every room with a ceiling lower than 4 meters will have a 100 hertz problem and even then in bigger rooms the null will simply shift up the frequency range. To help alleviate the low end peak, I bought some GIK bass soffits for the corners. Now keep an eye on eBay and Reverb because GIK sell loads of secondhand customer returns for really great prices. This only alleviated the peak by two decibels, but it cut down the decay time in the low end, resulting in a tighter bass response. Decay times are often an overlooked detail. The decay time of the reflections in your room are directly related to the intelligibility of your audio, especially in Atmos rooms. Ideally, we want as dry and dead a room as possible for mixing and mastering. Now, in addition to the phantom cosmetics of room acoustics, one issue I've had has been that I have drums in the room. I know round things designed to resonate are not ideal for mixing, but I practice and record drums in here so they are a necessary evil. Every drum is dampened with rubber silencer pads from Amazon to minimize their resonance. I'll leave a link below. And the kit gets covered with a thick quilt to stop the cymbals from shimmering. A further drum related problem in the room is the wall of snare drums on the back on the racks. And no, there is nowhere else to store them. They resonate at various high mid frequencies, but I found a solution for these two. 25 mm GIK razor panels are mounted to the shelves, covering the shells, reducing sound waves hitting them and bouncing back off them. And you can literally hear how effective these are. I also bit the bullet and installed a ceiling cloud to cover one of the first reflection points. And as you can see, it alleviates the null at 600 hertz, in the right speaker at least. And again, it helps with the decay times in the listening position. To isolate the drum kit from the mixing position even further, I found 200 mil thick panels. I connected these together with door hinges, effectively making them into a movable gobo. And the isolation effect was massive. However, they made the 100 hertz null even worse, which is not ideal. So what I gained in isolation was not worth the sacrifice. My next bet was to try them on the first reflection points either side of the listening position on top of the 50 mil rock wall that's already there. And this reduced the 100 hertz null by nine decibels, go figure. So it's making me think I could go even further with the reflection points, secondary reflection point treatment further down the room, panels behind the speakers and so on, but. I don't really have the space. Now, Trinov is doing a lot of the hard work to correct the room for me, but these things are never without a price, which we'll talk about in a later video. As a reference on room correction, sound ID and arc work well up to about six decibels of attenuation, but beyond that, and they start sounding weird. Trinov is much more powerful and can handle much higher levels of correction, but I'd suggest avoiding it doing more than 10 decibels. By the way, check out this video here comparing all of these speaker collaboration softwares in detail. So regarding acoustic treatment, it is worth at this point mentioning this. The frequency response your speakers produce in your room is only one third of the battle. 
The reverberations in the room and the decay time of these reflections are huge factors in the intelligibility of your audio. But the time and phase alignment of the frequencies your speakers produce and the accuracy and cohesiveness at which they deliver and they are delivered to your ears in the listening position is crucial. Correct phase and time alignment will maximize the fidelity of your speakers, improving the clarity, the detail, the transient response, the stereo imaging, and the phantom center imaging. Now, I would say if you get the phase coherence and the time alignment right, this can improve the quality of your speakers by 100%. You can literally double the quality of your speakers just by getting these details right. And this is where Trinov and Arc excel, and I highly recommend these systems. So the problem we all have is to effectively soundproof a room, we need to trap all the acoustic energy in the room so it doesn't escape and deliver noise to other people. Then at the polar opposite end of the spectrum, all this trapped energy creates axial, tangential, and oblique reflections within the room, resulting in peaks and nulls that interact at different frequencies in different places down the room, causing us further problems inside the room that we then have to spend time and money tackling to create an optimal listening environment to work effectively in. It's a nightmare, and the reality is everything is a compromise. Even a difference in wall materials on either side of your room can cause a different acoustic problem. For example, there's a door on, my, on the left side of my studio, and that causes the 100 hertz null in my left speaker to be worse. It's freaking annoying. However, with all these problems happening and the solutions that I've imposed, I do now have the room sounding better than ever and actually better than a lot of studios I've been in. So I'm reasonably happy. In part three, I'll be reviewing my latest studio purchase, the Amphion 115s, and how they've helped transform my mix translation. If you want a free sample master of your next song, I'm offering a no obligation free sample. Click the link below for details. I've been Ed Thorne. Thanks for watching. It's been emotional. <laughs>